It's 100 years ago today, the 6th of March, that an industrial accident happened in Dudley Port in the Black Country and it affected the communities around there uh, massively when 19 young girls and women died as a result of what was later proved to be negligence. Um, this poem is my attempt really to commemorate that in some way. I did my research by reading loads of newspaper cuttings um, and information that I found in an archive at the back of Tipton Library. Um, and this poem just takes us through the day, really. That day, 6am, give or take. Maybe she got up, still frowsy with sleep, babby sister stirring as she creeps out of the bed they share. Bare feet padding down the stairs, huffing out freezing plumes of air, appearing in the kitchen where mom pokes at lazy coal. The coal her stepbrothers picked yesterday off the bunk. And maybe dad is sitting in shame or a wing-backed chair, up early as if there was still a job to go to. And maybe he did say, oh, Bob, don't go today. It's no job for a wench. Perhaps Edith smiled, said she could earn enough to pay the rent. I'd like to think he put a hand to the child's head as she bent to lace her hobnail boots. And I'd like to think she looked up and smiled at him before heading off up factory road into the cold smog of a March morning. Between seven and eight. I think she whistled as she walked, waved to Mr Davies standing on the front step of the fountain. I'd like to think Mr Davies, a woodbine hanging from his lip, waved back. Maybe our Edith called for Edith Drew or Nellie Kay, giggling all the way from Tipton up to Dudley Port, cheeking lads who crossed their paths. Yeah, I'd like to think. I laughed. 8 a.m. on the dot. The workshop was freezing, I should imagine, even with a small stove burning. I expect they blew on their hands from time to time as they pushed cartridges through holes in metal boxes where, with a deft twist of their agile fingers, the young wenches wrenched free the paper-thin copper, which might have been the self-same colour as Lizzie Griffith's hair. I bet they bantered as they separated metals from live ammo and gunpowder peppered the floor, their clothes. And I'll bet they rolled their eyes when Gladys Bryant's mom came to complain about low wages. Who's a thinker is, eh? Pouring a flea in the ear of management. Maybe they sang a song or two, passing hours. 11.45 or thereabouts. I'll bet Bally's had been grumbling for a while. Not so far off dinner time. Perhaps Edith heard the fizz that one girl had reported. I hope she did. And then I hope she heard no more. Not the bang that blew the roof to kingdom come and sent the windows flying out. Or that unholy shrieking as girls ran out to burn in an open yard. <laughs>